Captain Boomerang, Blackguard, Mongal, Javelin. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 characters in the Suicide Squad. What does TGK stand for? What? This is Sol Soria. She's the leader of the Freedom Fighters, the resistance trying to take down the current government. Is that right waving at me? For this list, we're looking at the most interesting new and returning faces that appeared in the wild DC film. Villains, heroes, and anti-heroes will all be considered. Since we'll be diving into character backstories, a spoiler warning is in effect. Which character would you dance with in a Cordo Maltese nightclub? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Starro the Conqueror I call it Starro the Conqueror. That's meant to be derisive. Starro the Conqueror is by far the most unique big bad we've seen in the DC universe to date. The alien starfish can grow larger over time, create extensions of its own consciousness, and smash buildings if it feels like it. While Starro initially looked like it would be just another mindless CGI final boss, it had a surprisingly deep backstory. It was living its best starfish life until it was forcefully brought back to Earth and experimented on for decades while imprisoned. What the hell is this? I thought you were looking for Project Starfish. Your brother's visitors have you graves. Have you come to save me from that madman? Although Starro went on a destructive spree after being freed that needed to be stopped, we understood its rage. By the end of the film, we'd gained enough sympathy for the starfish that its final words left us a little emotional. I was happy, floating, staring at the stars. Number 9. Milton. Are you Milton? <laughs> The squad wasn't truly complete until Milton was added to the roster. This Cordo Maltese citizen was willing to do anything from grabbing empanadas to driving to risky places for the team. Although Milton could have sat out the final phase of the mission, he chose to go into the jaws of Jotunheim with his new friends. Yeah, no. His courage and loyalty made him the most memorable freedom fighter in the film. Unfortunately, Milton met his end during the final mission because he was a normal guy, and the enemies he encountered had guns. Although he may be gone, most of us will never forget him. Who's Milton? What? I don't remember any Milton. He has been with us the whole time! Number 8. Amanda Waller Savant, I'm warning you, this is desertion. Savant! This is your last chance. Turn back around. Despite being one of the most detestable villains in the entire film, Amanda Waller was still extremely fun to watch. She served as the puppet master behind Task Force X that wasn't afraid to cut a few of her team's strings along the way. Waller's also so morally bankrupt that she'd let innocent people perish just to achieve her own twisted goals. Not our problem. If you've destroyed Jotunheim and the records within, you've achieved the objective. Corto Maltese is no longer a U.S. ally. And even though she suffered major setbacks, she still managed to walk away relatively scot-free. Her every triumph and failure are captivating to watch thanks to a strong performance from Viola Davis. The actress ensured that Amanda Waller is a villain we loved to hate. I'm protecting this country. Everyone stand down. Miss Waller, I don't- STAND DOWN! Number 7. Rick Flagg Alright, we'll enter through the third floor, go into the inner staircase, and then down to the cellar where they usually keep their detainees. Hopefully Harley's still alive. Although Rick Flagg works for a really bad boss, he's got plenty of good in him. Whenever he leads Task Force X villains, he often tries to make sure they get home safe. Flagg's also not afraid to go off mission if something greater is at stake. And when he isn't focused on being a leader, he can let his guard down and cut loose. While Flagg's moral compass was a strength among the squad members, it became his fatal flaw. He refused to cover up his government's role in terrible experiments to complete a mission. I joined the military to serve my country, not to be its puppet. His attempt to expose the truth eventually cost him his life. Despite his sad end, we'll remember Rick as a good leader who tried to do the right thing. He killed Colonel Flagg. You wanted to share this with the press. It's proof the American government was behind Project Starfish the whole time. Number 6. Robert Dubois, also known as Bloodsport. He's in prison for putting Superman in the ICU with a kryptonite bullet. Dubois? Same answer as the last time. We 
initially thought Idris Elba's Bloodsport would be just a carbon copy of Deadshot. However, we discovered there's a lot more to this new character than we thought. After enduring a hellish childhood, Bloodsport became an extremely deadly mercenary with a badass suit. He presents himself as a hardened and selfish criminal who can't even show affection for his own daughter. But underneath all of Bloodsport's bravado, he has the ability to open up and connect with people. Not only does he form a sweet relationship with Ratcatcher 2, he also learns how to bring out the best in his teammates. Monster nom nom. Yes! Seeing Bloodsport go from looking after number one to becoming a competent leader made him a strong and complex addition to the squad. I told you I'd make you a leader, Dubois. You got a deal. Number five, Peacemaker. This is Christopher Smith, known as Peacemaker. In his hands, anything is a deadly weapon. His father was a soldier who trained his son how to kill from the moment he was born. Don't let Peacemaker's name fool you. He has no problem with violence. In fact, he may enjoy hurting people a little too much. What prevents this character from being a one-note psychopath are John Cena's incredible comedic talents. Peacemaker is often the funniest character in any given scene. If he's not making us cringe with his violent deeds, he's making us laugh with his ridiculous actions. No! Quit being a play, baby. Peacemaker! Peacemaker also has a twisted devotion to American ideals that makes him a great parody of other patriotic superheroes. If somebody said I'd eat every dick until the beach was clean for liberty, I would say no problem. Why would someone put penises all over the beach? Who knows why madmen do what they do? You know what I think? I think liberty is just your excuse to do whatever you want. His unhinged personality and Cena's pitch-perfect portrayal made us more excited to see the character return in the Peacemaker TV series. But if anything, He's shown he's resilient. It'll take some surgery, but eventually we'll get him back up to speed. You realize this is revenge, right? Number four, Dr. Harleen Quinzel, also known as Harley Quinn. What are you doing back in prison house? I got road rage in a bank. <laughs> oh, so mm. sorry. Actress Margot Robbie completed a hat trick of excellent Harley Quinn portrayals with her appearance in The Suicide Squad. The zany, clown-themed villain returned to the screen more hilarious and unhinged than ever before. Fortunately, Robbie got plenty of time to show us the latest version of the character when she commanded her own side story. All the cruelty. <sighs> Tears you apart after a while. Although we loved watching her solo journey and her stunning action scene, Harley was even better with the squad. She had great chemistry with her teammates and knew how to complement their unique personalities. Robbie's colorful performance made sure that Harley stood out as one of the most entertaining members of this zany ensemble piece. You, we're, we're here to save you. You were gonna save me? It was a really good plan, too. Well, I can go back inside and you can still do it. That's patronizing. Number three, Polka Dot Man. Abner Krill. What's that around his neck? A power dampener. They call him the Polka Dot Man. <laughs> polka Dot Man? What does he do, throw polka dots at people? If someone told us when filming began that we'd care about Polka Dot Man, there was no way we would have believed them. But against all odds, this villain became one of the most endearing new characters in the universe. Polka Dot Man is introduced as an incredibly odd duck who doesn't fit in the world. However, we began to understand his weird personality once we learned about his tragic backstory and serious issues with his mother. My mother was a scientist at Star Labs, and she was obsessed with turning me and my brothers and sisters into superheroes. She infected me. Although Polka Dot Man's past pushed him to become a villain, he still has a sensitive side to him. This made his sudden and unexpected demise truly heartbreaking. While Polka Dot Man didn't get to overcome all his demons, we'll remember him dearly as the movie's most colorful character. Superhero! Number two, Nanawe, also known as King Shark. Some people claim that Nanawe is a descendant of an ancient shark god. Whatever the case, he's strong and deadly. Does it talk? Book read. Wow. Since Nanawe happens to be a giant anthropomorphic shark, he has trouble fitting in with the human squad members. But it is ridiculously entertaining to watch him try to be a normal member of the group. I wear disguise. Oh. 
you're going to wear these guys. See? Hey, he's learning Spanish. And what kind of these guys? Fake mustache. Although Nanawe's not great at holding a conversation, he still manages to be incredibly expressive. Every time he's left isolated from his team, we feel his pain. And when Nanawe makes a genuine connection with another being, we can't help but cheer. He could have been another unremarkable big and strong squad member that happens to eat people. But Nanawe quickly became a shark we'd love to be friends with. No? Then can we be our friends? Number one, Weasel. Hey, he's not a werewolf, okay? He's a weasel, he's harmless. There's simply no other character that had a deeper backstory, better character development, or a more satisfying story arc than this iconic weasel. Well, except for our real number one pick. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. <laughs> Number 1. Cleo Cazzo, also known as Ratcatcher 2. Cazzo, will you be joining us? I just woke up. I don't function well early in the morning. My deepest apologies for disturbing you. <laughs> it's all right. A villain who used rats to steal valuables somehow managed to steal our hearts. In Cleo Cazzo's youth, her father, the original rat catcher, taught her to command rodents. She sadly became the lonely rat catcher too after he suddenly passed away. After she made a few bad decisions, she was eventually roped into joining Amanda's sinister squad. Although she was labeled as a villain, she showed incredible kindness to her teammates. If I die because I gambled on love, it will be a worthy death. Friends. She also has a surprisingly adorable relationship with the fantastic rat Sebastian. When push came to shove, Ratcatcher 2 put her gentle nature aside and became instrumental at taking down Starro itself. Seeing this kind and tragic villain save a city with her rat companions cemented her as the best member of the squad. Why rat, Papa? Rats are the lowliest and most despised of all creatures, my love. If they have purpose, so do we all. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.